and we are rolling it's wednesday the 10th of may in the midst of everything while waiting for rain group and everything to make a decision to make an announcement we manchester united fans are constantly getting fed new stories in transfers and on that jazz and who are we linked to and mark ogden is apparently coming out to say this Oh my god, Sheikh Yassim wants Manchester United legends in key role if takeover bid is successful. What does this mean? We're here, of course, to dissect this story. We're also here to look at the latest transfer rumors. Lataro Martinez is apparently being linked to us, amongst other striker opportunities and midfield in terms of Declan Rice. Declan was heavily linked to uh, Arsenal, but after his performance against us on the weekend, I think it raised Eric Ten Hag's eyebrows. So let's have a look at it. Let's unpack it all. Let's stop this DJ spin and let's get into the game. Let's do it. <laughs> Good afternoon, people. How are you all feeling? Are you feeling any better today? It's Wednesday. I know everyone is waiting for that very, very important news. I know that everyone is browsing the news and the phone and what's going on. Twitter is going mental. All the social is going mental, including the journalists as well, including Mark Ogden, who apparently came out just one hour ago with the, in, in a report. I just quoting from Strader News what he's saying about... <sighs> Ogden, Oggy, Oggy, I love you to pieces. Respect your work, but you're also the one that came out reporting the false stories regarding Harry Maguire. So I would just take it with a pinch of salt. But it's my duty to do due diligence on all the stories that's browsing around. So let's have a look at this story all together and let's dissect it and discuss it because that's what we do here. We have to. We have to, we have to. All right, I'm just going to minimize myself here. And obviously, we have the Glazer Up banner. I'm sorry, Sheikh Yassim, for covering your face. Oh, yeah, let's 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 have a go for it. Well, basically saying Sheikh Yassim wants Manchester United Legends in key role if bid is successful. Now, if that is the case, then we might argue who are those people? Who are actually those people? Let's read further. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, look, there's been a brief from Qatar. Yes, of course. And may, and what, is it may, what does it mean, brief from Qatar? Um, take it with a pinch of salt, but it's landed according to on the desk on ESPN. Sources have told Mark Ogden has, uh, that Sheikh Yassim bin Ham, Hamad Altani intends to offer Manchester United greatest players from Sir Alex Ferguson, most successful teams, a chance to return to Old Trafford in prominent roles. Coming your way, blockbuster near to you. Oh, coming soon. Oh, what a story. Of course, Sheikh Yassim will need to win the race to buy the club before introduces anything like this. But it's telling that these briefs are standard to roll out. Interesting why so now i'm still waiting for the drum roll who they are considering while it doesn't answer any of those questions we have about the takeover it will suggest that the car qatar are confident yes we've been reporting this before the feeling could be mutual on sir jim ratcliffe in your side because it will depend on the noise being made by Rainey Group and the family. So basically, you're saying that Sir Jim Ratcliffe also taking the same approach. What a creative writing. Is it real or is it just creative writing in the midst of waiting for announcement? Ogden also reports such a move would open the door for high-profile players from United's 99 treble winners. I love the 99 treble winners, including Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but that didn't work. Carrick didn't work, McKenna didn't work, Fletcher didn't work, including the Class of 92 group of homegrown stars such as Gary Neville. 
Paul Scholes, ooh, the uh, famous pundits and the politicians and leading figures from the club's most recent Champions League winning team to uh, 2008 to represent the club at various levels. Wait a minute. Does this ring a bell? Jobs for the boys? Uh, yeah, it does. Apparently, apparently, Sheikh Yassim believes that the ways to take advantage of this profile experience former greats, he thinks. But wait a minute, let's let's just unpack this. This is like, wait a minute, why would Sheikh Yassim do such thing if we return, if we back the tape and see that this hasn't worked? We had Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, class of 92 and 99 treble winners. We had McKenna. We had Carrick, we had Fletcher, and we had the famous Mickey Feeling leaning on the brick wall, you know, taking our free lunches at Carrington, you know, stinking up the place, to be honest. You know, I, I don't mind these ex-players, but I think we are through with the job for the boys, lads. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you think. It's also noted in the report that the players from two, 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 2008 squad have already been approached by representat representatives of Sheikh Yassim. I don't know, man. As I said, this, in the midst of everything, you know, journalists has to write something to keep the positive flame going. Oggy, like, you know, has thrown it out there that Sheikh Yassim camp are looking to sort of look at the old boys from 98, 90, class of 92, etc. Scolzi and Gary Neville. Fine. I mean, Gary Neville has been the most vocal, but I don't think Gary Neville will be, give up his job. I think Gary Neville is aiming to be a politician. Um, what do you think? Anyway, for me, this is all lots of lots of spin and jargons. Uh, and I will shy away from, you know, jobs for the boys, to be honest, right? Um Another thing that I want to sort of raise just came to my attention now is, bear with me, bear with me, it's Latara Martinez being linked to Manchester United. Reports coming out that significant update on Manchester United situation, striker situation, pursuit at the way are easier option. Now, why would they say easy option? Well, we've been seeing that, uh, you know, we've been linked to Harry Kane and uh, Victor Osman, and of course, Victor Osman and um, Napoli just won Serie A, Scudetto, and all them jazz, and want 150 million for Ozeman. And then dealing with Daniel Levy, <laughs> it is just opening a can of worms, according to my opinion. Daniel Levy is the most trickiest customer you can deal with, and I've been told that he doesn't want to sell to a Premier League rival. So in certain ways, the way I see it, he'd rather sell to Bundesliga, to or anything, or fork up 100 million. But uh, Harry Kane has about 12 months left on his contract, come to summer. He will try to make a move, force a move, but I think that we've seen that before, that um, Daniel Levy will, yeah, basically he will whoop, whoop, cut block him, not, and this will kind of drag on to the end of summer. But Ten Hag needs his players in early so he can do the pre-tour planning. They can hop on a flight, fly to USA. But let's dive right into Lutara Martinez and why I think, personally, think it's a very good signing if this happens, right? So let's let's read this story and what has been said. Well, Manchester United are weighing up the possibility of making a bid for Inter Milan striker Lutaro Martinez this summer, according to the reports. And as we know, Inter Milan is playing um, Milan today in the semi-finals of champion league so it's going to be um lutaro Mar martinez watch for me as well the red devils are still looking to replace cristiano ronaldo can you believe it we still have him replace ronaldo after the portuguese international went and cried to pierce morgan we all know how that went uh following the controversial um interview so he got his move to saudi arabia where he's making a lot of money playing sandball um would, would weghurst who was brought in as a temporary replacement uh, in january with netherlands international joining from a loan from bernie until the end of the season clearly didn't work out he didn't hasn't really scored in the premier league as of yet um so he's most unlikely being able not 
been staying. He is unlikely to go back to Burnley or Besiktas or whatever. Widespread reports have then claimed that it is now the top priority for the next transfer season within Tottenham's Hurricane, Napoli's Victor Osman and Benfica's Juan Carlos Ramos amongst the name strikers. So yeah, here's actually the list. Manchester United are eyeballing Harry Kane, Victor Osman, Juan Carlos Ramos, and now Lutaro Martinez. Let me know in the comments below who do you think would be the perfect striker for Eric Tenag. Would it be Harry Kane? Would it be Victor Osman or Juan Carlos Ramos? Who had a decent World Cup, but I think Lutaro Martinez, we will dive into his stats why I think he will be a perfect signing for Eric Ten Hag, being Argentinian and knowing um, likes of Garnacho, knowing likes of the Butcher Martinez and many, many more in the squad. He will just fit right back into that pocket. And now Football Insider claims that there have been significant update in the Red Devils' pursuit on Inter Milan striker Martinez. We will have another Martinez. Who's going to be, when we, we have to call the Martinez 1, Martinez 2, and Martinez 3 eventually. And Fernandez 1, Fernandez 2, because we have another Alvaro Ma Fernandez in the squad as well. With Manchester United actively mo monitoring the situation of the Argentinian International World Cup winner. World Cup winner. Yeah, I, I don't mind to have a World Cup winner as a striker. Manchester United has been on this trail for a number of years with a 25-year-old. Uh, scoring constantly in the Serie A. We will look into that uh, for Inter Milan. And the Red Devils set to pull the plug on the pursuit of Ozzyman because his extortional price tag. 100% agree with this. The Premier League side think they, the, a deal for Martins could be easier to do. Right there, we have to unpack this. Yes, this is what I said earlier. You know, to strike a deal with Inter Milan it would be impossible. They want 100. I mean, strike a deal with Napoli for Osman would be very, very difficult to pull in the summer. 150 million euros they want. They just want um, the, the Serie A. They're not in a rush to sell them. Whoever forks up 150, yeah, money talks. You know what I mean? So I think we should share away from those uh, difficult signings. Just go for the easier. Just pay for Martinez or pay for the cheaper option. Just trigger a release clause and off you go. Go pack your bags and go to US for a US preseason tour. Football Insider has also added on the Martinez would come command a smaller price tag than Osman and Inter Milan would need to balance the books. There you have it. There's the keywords. Inter Milan are will, more willing to sell to balance the books. And if they fail to qualify for the next season's Champions League. Yeah. Here's the thing. A lot of other clubs are in financial trouble. Um, as we sitting here, it's global recession time. Barcelona is one of the clubs that we know. Juventus is in deep shit as well. So there will be bargains in the market to, to make. AC Milan and Atlanta are viewing to knock Inter out of the fourth spot with four matches of Serie A remaining of the season while also taking on Milan rivals at Champions League semifinals tonight. That's what I said, yeah. AC Milan versus Inter semifinal tonight. Perfect opportunity to eyeball Martinez, Lutaro Martinez. It's further to say that United boss Ten Hag recently outlined that he wants from a new striker signing this summer. What he wants is a goal scoring, top goal scoring of his list, desirable with desirable attributes. Everyone is different, obviously, but for a striker, the main thing is to score goals by any method. Score with your head, score with your butt, score with one leg standing. That is far, far, far what Eric Ten Hag wants. He wants goals. Jokes aside, this is what he said at Sky Sports. But yeah, we all been seeing that that there's been knock knock, but nobody there. You know, balls has been coming in to the six yard box, and nobody's been there to tap it in. Right, not even Martial re of recently. And Rashford is not a, you know, number nine. He's a right and out uh, winger. You know, inverted winger, one may ask, but somebody that could be a striker in the future. But we need a prolific goal scoring fox in the box type of thing that can press, that can defend, that can do all the things that Eric Ting Hag wants.
like similar like Hurricane, but in a younger version. We need a striker who scores goals because we have ability in the team to put balls in the box. So we need a striker to finish. Yeah, this is just what I said. You know, we need to finish the dinner, right? We're serving up the entree. We're serving up the uh, lunch. We're serving up everything, but nobody's there to finish the dessert, the full, full five-course meal. We have to build a new future, according to the article, what Eric Ten Hag said, and we need a striker who, who not only scores goal, but contributes by linking up play very well and pressing, which is very, very important. There you have it. This is a type of striker that Eric Ten Hag is looking for. It's right there in this article. <clears throat> Basically what he's saying, <coughs> sorry for coughing, he needs a striker that scores goals, that has the ability to put the tap-ins as well, uh, to be in the box, to finish the dinner. But also, for the future, he needs a striker that not only scores goals, but contributes by linking the play, pressing, defending, and just an overall team player. This is very important. There's no room for you know individual brilliances. We need... The way Eric Ten Hag is playing, he's attacking as a collective unit, the hunting in pack, the defending as a flock as well. I hope this makes sense to you guys. I hope it does. I hope it does. So all in all, in general, I, I think it's uh, it's fantastic. If we look at um, if you look at his stats, we can then understand that. Um, what kind of striker he is we have to sort of do the due diligence um let me just put up who scored stats and we will see let's find out okay here we have uh who scored who scored is my go-to when i check stats 100 100 um so basically tara martinez he's 175 centimeters or oh, 174. He's a position forward. He's 25 years of age. He's Argentinian, right? Current club is Inter. We know. If we look at his goals in current situation, Serie A, he, he bagged in 19 goals this season so far. Uh, two in Champions League, one in Coppa Italia, and 22 goals total this season alone, right? And, um, wow, he didn't score for Argentina, of course not, but, um, yeah. Very, very good. Yeah. Um, right. Total pass accuracy, uh, 74, right? In percentile, right? Number of uh, assists, eight. Number of yellows, I mean, he's quite aggressive. Tenacious, six. You know, his XG is quite high. Aerials one, 1.1 percentile is pretty good in the air as well. So no pretty much any weakness in total ratings out of 10. You're getting a seven out of 10 striker, right? That's that's pretty good. That's pretty much what you're looking at. So he's predominantly a fox in the box. He operates in this area, as you can see, around the six yard box. He's, um, if you look you know, this is why I always find interesting his characteristics. Normally, what you find here is weaknesses. You will have some attributes that, you know, and this is empty. This is empty, says player has no significant weakness. Wow. So what is his key strengths? Well, what you can see here is finishing is very strong. Holding up the ball, hold up the play is very strong. Key passes, very strong. Long shots, strong. Defensive contribution, strong. Lutaro's style of play. Indirect set pieces threat. Wow, we like that. Likes to play long balls. Also good. Gets fouled often. That means that he's very tenacious and hard to stop. Likes to tackle. Yes, get in there. Commits to foul often. Wow. So there you have it. This is the type of striker that Eric Ten Hag is des describing, right? basically an all-round team player, right? They can bag the goal, place within the six-yard box. It's good finisher, good linking up play, playing with his back against the wall, very good passer of the ball, likes long shots, and defensive contribution. 
guys, let me know what you think. Is Lutaro Martinez the striker for you? Comparing Harry Kane, comparing to Victor Osman, comparing to the price tag. And also the latest that I don't have is uh, Guancalo Gnocco. No, whatever is gone. But let me know what you think. Is there something that you would go for? I find it very interesting. I've been watching Lotaro Martinez and I like the player. There is the one for the future, 25 years of age, all round, fits the mold of Eric Ten Hag, minus the height, 175 centimeters tall or 174 according to this. We know that Ten Hag likes tall players. But we've also seen that he utilized um, Weghorst recently that didn't work out at aerial threats and jewels. So it's been proven that you don't have to be high or tall to win aerial duels in the butcher Lissandra Martinez, who people were slagging off being a short center back, but this guy wins duels. I think it's a great signing. I think Argentinian mana, the spirit has already been established. We have South American players that's clearly working. We have the Argentinian mix, the Portuguese speaking mix, Brazilian mix, Dutch mix, British mix, and Swedish. So it's it's a good squad. It's the good chemistry. We just need to add extra grit, extra fight into that team, right? And we've seen that the South American so far has been very, very good. Now, another thing that doing the round right today, I don't have anything to share. It is basically Declan Rice rumors that Manchester United are willing to enter the race for Declan Rice. We all know that Arsenal has been eyeballing, uh, eyeballing Declan Rice quite well. Um, I think it will come down to money. West Ham is not doing so good. I think by winning against us over the weekend, they kind of avoided the relegation. Uh, I might be funny to say that Eric Ten Hag gave the victory away to Moyes. We saw them how they were talking on the sidelines before the game, shook hands and hug each other and say, hey, you, hey. You give me Declan Rice, I give you this victory, and off we go, huh? Deal, huh? Deal, no deal. Hey, oh, jokes aside, but who knows, right? I think Eric Tenag was very impressed by Declan Rice, and so was I when I saw him play against us. He was the most dominating force on the pitch, while we looked very lethargic. Declan Rice is a player that can go up and down with an extreme engine. He's a perfect, would I say, Casemiro number two. He can even cha uh, challenge Casemiro because we can. We have to have rotation. Casemiro also needs a rest. So Declan Rice for me would be a perfect, perfect um, signing. Number two for me also, or you know, if I compare apples to apples, will be Moises Casado from Brighton. But let's see. Let's see what West Ham wants. He will be most likely a slugfish between who's got the deepest wallet. Um, will it be Arsenal, Kroenke? Will it be? Manchester United with Altani in the range. Who knows? Let us know what you think. Do you want ex-Manchester United players to be part of this new kind of club? We're talking about Gary Neville, Paul Scholes in on them jazz. I say bring back uh, <laughs> Roy Keane. That would be something, right? That's the only one that makes sense. No bollocks. Guys, like and subscribe to this video um let us know what you think it's been mick ruby from mufc realist tv enjoy the day and be nice to each other on the socials see you in the next episode bye for now thank you so much for stopping by and watching mufc realist tv don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on the socials